I don't drink soda. He looks like he would be like a like a evil scientist in something or like a villain. Like a, a not like a big blockbuster. And he kind of looks like Anthony Hopkins, really. A bit like an evil... Like a bootleg cancer yeah. Anthony Hopkins. Like, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And it's something about his voice, too. It's like... I don't know what you would Oh, do it's Dr. Philip Zimbardo. The oh, heroic Im- wait. imagination project president. Where do I know this guy from? I don't know. Google He's him. from a thing. Let's see. Uh, Dr. Philip Z- Zimbardo. Zimbardo. They call me Doc Z, though, for shorts. He's an American. Oh, the Stanford prison deal. Oh, yeah. Is that what? Oh, yep. Did you watch that? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, for so real. So he's like a, I mean, he's a real sick character himself if he orchestrated all that. Now he's he's talking about these other scams. How do we know that Zimbardo's not behind this strip search deal? Like he likes fucking with people's heads. Yeah. Getting in their psyche. I agree. It is. It is questionable. Stirring the pot a little bit with humanity. I wonder if we could get his personal phone number. I mean. He's got to have an office, right? Let me. Yeah, let's find out. Fill up. I don't know, dude. This was this video was nine years ago. You think this guy's still alive? Phone number. Look oh, at his face. maybe not. Yeah, time might that. Have caught up with him. Look at that fucking trim job on his mustache. It's oh. so much bigger on this one side. Welcome to the Natural Habitat Podcast, everybody. My name is Mikey Buya, and I'm joined by Awesome Ty. Does he have his number? No, no, no not not off of uh, quick Google. Mm. Yeah, I, I doubt this guy's still alive, dude. He can't be. Uh, I think he's alive. I mean, I guess I just Googled him, right? Yeah, doesn't he have a Wikipedia? Uh, let's see. You're probably wondering who we're talking about. We're talking about Dr. Philip Zimbardo. Um, he's like an evil scientist or something, like a comic villain. Uh, yeah, he's 88 he, he, years old. So he's probably not, I mean, he might be messing with people. It's probably the best he can do, really, is call up like a McDonald's and fuck with somebody. You know what I mean? Like, he probably doesn't have access to like the Stanford Laboratory or anything that he at one point did. Yeah, that's the only power that he has. And he's got all those books. I mean, he's mm-hmm. probably just cooped up in his house, fucking around with McDonald's employees and then, you know, making documentaries yeah. about it. And he was the, you know, creator of the Stanford Experiment and the Star of our finale today which is the fast food strip search yeah but yeah. before we get to that we need to dip back to this we're gonna, iceberg. We're gonna pivot <clears throat> iceberg right on over pivot. to to is it the iceberg that gets the emphasis or is it mcdonald's that gets the emphasis well i guess it's both like, it's a you have to attach them it's the mcdonald's iceberg you know, like a good segue would be I recently tried their new hand breaded um, chicken sandwich, their take on like the Popeye style real chicken sandwich. Mm-hmm. And it was, I mean, it's better than any other chicken sandwich, real plain. I mean, it's just basically this, this breaded chicken fillet yeah. with like a pickle and maybe like a little bit of sauce. It wasn't saucy enough for my tastes. But um, it's definitely a step above the McChicken or any previous incarnation of a McDonald's chicken sandwich. It um, sounds... It's it's almost like it's the um, tip of the chicken iceberg. It sounds, like, uh, it sounds like that sandwich is missing a couple items, like some tomato and possibly some iceberg no, lettuce. No, it's just pickles and sauce. And that's mi- like the that's the Popeye style. Have you well, had no, the Popeye sandwich? Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's whatever. I take the pickles off, but... You know, that's a personal preference. No. But, um. Iceberg lettuce? Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, yeah. <laughs> that's, okay, that's four segues. Pick one. Yeah, that was that one. That was the one. That yeah, the okay, one. cool. Uh, so this is not a new thing, I guess. We're late to the game on the iceberg thing, but this is a thing that I've been seeing more and more. I guess it blew up on Reddit a while ago, and then now people are starting to make YouTube videos about icebergs. And I got sucked into one about Skate 3. I don't know if you ever played Skate 3. I the, vaguely the remember game. the series. I mean, like yeah. I was more of a Tony Hawk guy, but yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't really get too deep into it. I want to say that I had the demo, and the demo was like actually really expansive. It was like two hours of gameplay, and then as long as you didn't finish the last mission, you could just free skate forever. Yeah, I remember that everybody that played Skate was like super like, 
I play skate, not Tony Hawk. Like they were like almost snobbish about it. Like, oh, this is way more technical. You have to press this series of buttons instead of this series of buttons to do this instead of this. And you know, Tony Hawk is for for kids. That's a, that's a baby game. Yeah, that's well, baby. Skate games. did it had physics with the yeah, exactly. with the joystick. Yeah, you would have it's, to go like left for kick flip, right for heel flip, kid hour twist in skate. You twist it, you flick it. I mean, you don't even need a fancy name. You just, just skate. Skate. It's the closest thing you can do to actually skating, which which I wasn't gonna do. <laughs> is play skate is the next best thing to skating. That's that's the that's the um That is what they said. That's the narrative that was left. Yeah. That was also their slogan. Skate, the next best thing to skating. It's it's so real, it's like you're in the game. I think that was a different video game slogan. The EA sports slogan? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. I think that was it's in the game. You're not in the game. Yeah. It do was you, in the do game. Do you remember the Ronald McDonald video game? No, was that a thing? Yeah. There was a there was a uh, McDonald's version. It was basically like um um Mario Brothers, like a blatant Mario Brothers ripoff with um McDonald's characters inserted instead of the Mario oh, universe what? characters. <laughs> yeah. Um I have like a emulator, um arcade emulator and it has that game on it. It's wild. Oops. Yeah, that's uh, that's not in the iceberg. Happy Meal app. No, the it's Lost not Ring. that. It's definitely like Nintendo era. I don't know that it was actually like a official release or how it came to be. That's not any of it. That's like a modern app game. Look up McDonald's and oh no, that might be it down at the bottom. I saw this. Oh yeah, I think that might be it. Yeah. No, but that looks like <laughs> Sega or Super Nintendo. This was like shittier. This, this, Mick Kids. Mick Kids, that's it. Mick Kids. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to look that. Uh, Mick Kids video game. Give it to me. Oh, man. I, I remember this. Yeah, it might have been an official that. official game. I wonder if it was like a like a mail away type deal or something or something you got from McDonald's. It had to have been. Like I don't think I ever saw that in like a video store. What a cool uh like this sticker right here is like really nostalgic for me. That was my but See, era. that's not Mick Kids. I think Mick, Mick <coughs> McDonald Land might be a different one. I feel like that's the second one that we saw. Or the the Mick Kids is the definitely like the one that I I know of. And That's it right one? there. Yeah, yeah. See, it's it's like yeah. a Mario three ripoff. Yeah, it really is. Man, I want to play these. You said you had it on an emulator. Yeah, nice. I have it on like a Raspberry Pi arcade plug-in thing I have for the house. Uh, so these icebergs. The deeper that you go down the iceberg, the more, uh, I guess, unknown and obscure the facts get. See, but I, I feel like this one, what we're going to talk about, like, it's a bad example of that because, like, it's kind of, like, poorly laid out. Like, you've got some really obscure ones. Yeah. And then you've got, like, some of the least obscure, which... Yeah, the like, hot coffee. The hot coffee. Too. Everybody knows about that. Some old lady dumped hot coffee on herself. But McDonald's. do they? Because that was, like... <clears throat> Right before, like, I mean, our, we were kids, yeah. our generation, like, that was already a legend when when I was a kid. Yeah. That was a already a bit. story of a thing that happened a while ago. But still, would it deserve to be at the bottom? Like, <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know about the bottom. But, I mean, does a 20-year-old know what that is? Probably not. But. Yeah. So, I mean, we got to assume that everything should be catered to our age demographic. <laughs> yeah, true. I mean. I mean, it's isn't it like uh, eighteen to thirty five or thirty four or whatever? Yeah, or even forty five, maybe. I'm, I'm saying I'm saying forty five for sure. Cause, yeah, because like, yeah, I'm I'm trying to have another ten years of. Well, yeah, of, because like uh, thirty is the new twenty, is what they say. Yeah, eighteen to forty five. Yeah. Ma- white male. Eighteen to no, forty five. <laughs> I, I don't think that's part of it. Male <laughs> though, I think I think they still like advertisers still are sexist. Yeah, like they target like males, male audiences. Yeah. And I think that's like that seems like a policy that's going to get canceled eventually. Like at some point, like all the liberals are going to come for that, and you're not going to be able to mm-hmm. select a gender to market to. Yeah, 
they're gonna be like, what does that matter? It's a thing of the past. It's I mean, like I I I am a blank I'm a blank canvas. I'm whatever whatever you want to picture me as. So if you want to picture me as a beautiful lady, I mean, I I really can't stop you. Yeah, true. I, I'm not gonna encourage it, but <clears throat> you have the right. Yeah, or if you want to picture me as like a um, just completely like a tree, like a tree. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. I you mean, do that. It's it's your your mind, your sick perverse mind. <laughs> So, uh, Iceberg. Iceberg Slim. This guy, guy, right? <laughs> this guy, yeah, didn't he read a book on pimping or something? <laughs> I think it's a pimp, a known pimp for sure. Yeah. Uh, or was that a slang for a cigarette? Iceberg Slim. That'd An be Iceberg awesome. Slim. Man, I've been seeing um, Lucky Strikes. Like, they're like advertising yeah. all of a sudden. I've been seeing them all in the like, stores. It and makes me want to go pick them. up a pack of Lucky Strikes and, like, have a smoke. I Pe- mean, like, I haven't smoked cigarettes in a while, but, man, like. A Lucky Strike? It's just like, man, like, they just said, they're like, you know what? Maybe we'll advertise this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like. That was one of those things that was like they would it would be up in the way corner just like two packs, yeah, just yeah. kind of chilling that nobody yeah, like would the, ever the touch. Regulars and the, the lights or something. They had a carton that they bought like two years ago. And it was, was always, like posted. I always liked the way they looked. You know, they always had like a slick retro mm-hmm. look. You know what I mean? Like you're from the fifties or something. You're fucking yeah. James Dean probably smoked them. And it uh, it also was the same design as the candy cigarettes, the little candy chalk cigarettes. Oh yeah, they had Lucky Strikes. <clears throat> Because for some somehow they got the the IP for that, and all the other ones were like fake cigarette brands that never existed, and then they had Lucky Strike and cigarettes, had actual on brand <clears throat> Lucky Strike candy. Cigarettes. Yeah, it's like if they had candy cigarettes that were like Marlboro cigarettes, right? Because I mean, I the way that this isn't true probably, but the way that I see it, there was a time when Lucky Strikes were the only cigarettes. That that was it. Or they were at least the Marlboro. Yeah, of they cigarettes. were definitely like the predominant cigarette yeah. for sure. You know what would be a, a sick dive is looking at back at the stuff you could buy with camel cash over the years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if there's like catalogs posted online somewhere. That was lit. But anyways, you know what there's else has be. a long legacy of, um, <laughs> of, of merchandising yeah. and advertising? This guy's iceberg is bad, but... There was a lot of meat on here, so we decided yeah, to do it. But we also will critique it. On here. So the first thing that stood out to me was at the very top. This isn't even on the iceberg. This is in the sky. Yeah, well, that's another thing. Like this goes from the sky down past the iceberg, down yeah, deep into the ocean. Way deep. It's and supposed to start at the it's iceberg. In no particular order. I mean, it's somewhat sorted, but like I, I think these are supposed to go from like you know like basic knowledge down to like more and more like mind-blowing like little known yeah even conspiratory type shit and and i don't think it's supposed to go all the way down to like the bottom of the ocean where the monsters are no not at all but uh you know this guy had a lot to say about mcdonald's obviously he must have (laughs) used to work there man yeah like this guy this is a researched list whether it's you know like well constructed or not like that's beside the point there's a uh there's did you hear about the lawsuit that's going on with mcdonald's which well i guess we'll get down to that because that's on here uh (laughs) first thing that jumped out was free razor with the purchase of breakfast so 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 by the by the laws of these iceberg diagrams that should be something that like everybody knows like how this should be or how I mean, like, well, no, because so confusing. That that was actually part of the sky in the iceberg. Oh, so the skies. So this is like, well, let's see what else is on here. The skies just. I mean, what else is in the sky? Just waved. Refusing, refusing to pay U.S. employees a livable wage, and that seems like kind of like slanted. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm not sure. So this that that's seems just like allegations, like maybe in objective the sky. opinion. Maybe they're throwing up a bunch of allegations, encouraging childhood obesity. See, and that's that's another thing. I mean, nobody's. I guess they. Nobody's forcing these children to eat McDonald's. I mean, now why this Szechuan sauce? It's the Rick and Morty, right? Yeah, but it's like, what does that have to do with childhood obesity and paying a livable wage? I mean, and I don't think that... I think this is, again, supposed to be ranked in order of, like, you know, how many people know about the the stuff. So, look, I say... We'll say that the sky up here, this is fair game. You put anything you want up Oh, okay, so the sky's the wild card. Sky's the limit. Yeah. Okay. So, free razor with a purchase of breakfast was the thing that stood out to us. So, then the... Okay. 
and I found the commercial for this McRazor or something. Yeah, the McRazor breakfast. That's actually what it was called. Yep. Come on, son. You better eat a good breakfast. Hey, you better start using my razor, too. Oh, come on, Sam. Hi. McDonald's has good news. With scrambled eggs and sausage or an egg McMuffin or hotcakes and sausage, you get a Gillette Good News disposable twin blade razor free. Good thing it's a twin blade with that tough beard. <laughs> come on, Sam. Yeah. Free. Good uh, News I'm, razor. It's just like what... I mean, I guess corporate synergy between Gillette and McDonald's, but I mean, it's like, wait, these, these products are just so unrelated. And like, it's like, oh, here's a basic toiletry that you buy for <laughs> super cheap already. Like, and like, why does the dad like, like, is the dad not really not going to provide the son his own razor unless like McDonald's does so for him? Yeah. Like, is he, he's my razor. And this is like, did he only take his son to McDonald's at this moment in his life when he was starting to need a razor? Like They're why like celebrating? You got little peach fuzz. Yeah, little peach fuzz. We're gonna take you to McDonald's muffins. for the first time, son. And he's like, really? Yeah, I mean it's the '70s, clearly, but yeah, that's so that's a weird one. Yeah, that is very strange. And maybe I, the slogan that they present afterwards is "We do it all for you." So maybe it's like, oh, we do it all for you. We do it all. So you you, you go in our bathrooms. You can take a little bit <laughs> yeah. of toilet paper with you. Not like, just burgers. All, yeah, we give you razors. We'll also, you know. Help you pay rent if you're short on rent. They'll do that. Yeah, they're a loan shark. It's, yeah, it's loan a very, shark, I mean, like a massage parlor, like an ethically cruel interest rate. But we'll loan you the money you need for rent. <laughs> I yeah. mean, you're gonna pay it back. We'll help you out some, but you'll pay us back in what seventy two hours. It's like that's not enough. Yeah. Uh, so that's interesting already to give a razor to someone. Yeah, so that's seems I mean, weird. That could easily become a weapon. And then like the next tier is just like all weird products that they've served. Plus think about all the unstable people that hang out at a McDonald's and it's, you know, it seems to be a hub for the homeless. I worked at McDonald's for like a year when I was a teen and, and like I remember every morning there would be a group of the same seniors that would come in and just really, I mean, like they were you know like treating it like their own little social club just being real rowdy for the am <laughs> hour for seniors you know and like they would just they would just order like a single coffee and just get refill after Fuck. refill and like they would make uh, like for the amount that they were you know like buying maybe they bought breakfast every now and again not always but they would just be like the biggest hassle and they're just being noisy and like it's Leave like a big ass mess it's like shit. 6 a.m it's like i don't want to deal with you know these these golden golden What's like a thing you can call seniors? Golden uh, moldies? Golden moldies, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Bunch of golden moldies. <laughs> this is beautiful. Uh, yeah, that sounds rough, man. But yeah, like the top tier, like where the actual iceberg sticking out of the, the tip of the iceberg mm-hmm. is is like the weird things they've served, like the McPizza, the McLobster, the onion nuggets. I've heard of a couple of these things. Yeah, here I like, have a... Another list, we have the sausage and egg twisty pasta, which is big in Hong Kong, which sounds uh, sounds good. It's like sausage and egg, but with pasta. Twisty one. Oreo affogato, which I don't know what affogato is. It's got to be like, a, like some sort of dessert. Sort of, yeah, or a burger. Oh, an Oreo like burger? Like Oreo burger. Oh, dang. I mean, you've got like a, like cookies, and then you've got... Like the, the Wario cream on like a McDonald's, traditional McDonald's patty. That sounds good. Yeah. Uh, Cadbury cream egg McFlurry in the UK. Fruit and maple oatmeal. We have that here. Oh, yeah. It says USA. That's kind of weird. So I guess it's one from each country. Yeah, I guess, man. Like that's, I feel like McDonald's should just, you know, like offer the same food to everybody. Yeah. It's like, why are they why, giving everyone different yeah, stuff? Like, what if I want those things? Like, why can't I have them in my McDonald's? But anyways, yeah, like the the onion nuggets. I think that like I think that's just one of like the failed things. There's like a bunch of things that like aren't even successful. Yeah, they're, they're just just terrible ideas. <clears throat> and what is McAfrica? We gotta we gotta plug it in. Plug it into the machine. Plug it in. Let's see. Uh... Like Africa, because that kind of reminds me of. Oh, it's like a like a pita. It was a burger, a yeah, pita, pita burger. How do you say is that, is is that a gyro, or is, is it that what a a a hero a gyro? Is that Baba Ganoush? Am I thinking of like? 
I think you're thinking of something else. But a a hero, an hero, a hero, an hero, 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 an hero, hero, hero. It's like a silent G. Baba ganoush. That's just like that's like a little that's pasta, like a goop. little potato pasta stuff or something. It's like a goop. Oh, baba ganoush. Yeah, Is that like a, that's like the hummus stuff that comes on the side? It's like uh, like oatmeal. Your oatmeal. Sorry. It looks like oatmeal. Uh, Does so, McDonald's serve baba ganoush anymore? I don't. Th- maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Uh, McBobagan, what would you even call it? <laughs> McBobaganoosh. <laughs> I mean, that's too obvious. Baba Ganoosh. McDonald's bagel steak, that sounds okay. I oh, remember they used to have those bagel sandwiches. Those were fire. Whatever, McDonald's, maybe you should hop on that train. No, yeah. Maybe we can, maybe we can franchise a McDonald's and be the one that sells Baba Ganoosh. But um, and then like the next tier is like commercials that they've made, probably like ones that in retrospect are offensive. <laughs> the dead dad commercial. I'm I'm curious about that. One. Well, I got it, and I haven't watched it yet. Neither of you. So let's all figure out what this is together. So it's like your pulp fiction with the with the butch guy, the boxer guy. You know, his father passed, and they brought him a box of his belongings. It's oh like, yeah, yeah. Christopher Walken's there, and yeah. he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like you go, son." <laughs> <laughs> he stuck this watch in his ass. It was like a whole thing. Mom. Yes, love. What was that like? Oh, it's, they're Brits. It was big and cool. He's very cheeky. Tall as house. With big, big hands. He was tall as a house with big hands. I think she's romanticizing this guy's appearance a little bit. Come on, little He was never scruffy. Always smart. Yeah, and his know. shoes. So shiny. You could see your face in it. <laughs> Dad played football, didn't he? Yeah, he was good. Needlessly long commercial. <laughs> Real Captain. long. I feel like this is like was cut down <laughs> often. Like you know how commercials. Are like. Oh, this is this has unedited yeah. ninety seconds. Right so yeah, this is the long cut. Oh wow, with all the girls. <laughs> like what the fuck was that? That for sure got cut. No brown. I kind of want to make a cut of this myself. No the girls. Oh, oh, so there they just they're they're walking to McDonald's and then that's that's their easy no. out. Brown. Was your dad's favorite too? <laughs> Tartar sauce. Well done, you. Just... Tartar sauce. <laughs> Tartar sauce dripping off his chin. Is that it? <laughs> the last shot is just the mom like staring at him. Yeah, it's a, a really weird commercial. Yeah. They just fucking use this kid's imaginary dead dad. So another thing on there was it was Sarah Michelle Geller being banned for life, which if you if you look into that, she actually did a commercial when she was like a I don't know some sort of child. Oh man, where, was that on this tier? No, I was just it was just a segue. It was I was gliding you know easing us down the the iceberg. Well, I have that too, which we also haven't watched. But so. supposedly she says some really horrible things about McDonald's, and they 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 sued her. They they sent the suits after her, and she caught and a man yeah. for life. Yeah, stupendous. So. Okay, well, yeah, she got sued, and Burger King got sued, and it resulted in her being banned for life, which is insane. You're gonna ban a child <laughs> from McDonald's for life? That's crazy. And still to this day. <laughs> she's all hanging out with she's people. all super famous too yeah, like hella famous no fucking a movie star you can't come in here mm-hmm. and they're all like uh, they're all like driving to the beach and her friends are like we're gonna stop and get some McDonald's real quick and she's like 
I can't be on the property. I can't. You have to let me out at the gas station. Like they're just telling like all these different like low level employees about how to enforce a serum. It's like it's part of the training. Yeah, it's how to enforce the the Geller ban. Mm -hmm. It's the only updated part of the video. Yeah, it just cuts into like a HD, and it's like some new guy, and he's all like, "All right, we're gonna teach you how to deal with this." So. It had to have been horrible, whatever she said, right? I, I hope so. Huh? Worth banning. It can't just be like, come over here instead of McDonald's. That's not, you don't get banned for that. Yeah, I mean. So let's see. And now, a stupendous, gigantic, colossal deal from Burger King. I just found out right now, a regular hamburger is only 39 cents at Burger King. Only 39 cents for a burger. I wonder why. It's not Christmas. Birthday. I know what it is. It's unbelievable. For a limited time only at Burger King, get a regular burger for just it's gotta be another one, right? Yeah, that can't be it. I mean, the child was and adorable, then, like the spokesman type deal. Colossal deal from Burger. Yeah, that wasn't it. That couldn't have been it. <laughs> oh yeah, there she is again. Should it be? Should it be this one? It's gotta be right. Now this says, "Did someone say cute?" This is a compilation of all of them. I want to see the libelous one. Oh, it looks like there's another one down, down two videos. Holiday Burger King. She was just popping off in one of them, I bet. Oh, okay. Here we go. TMZ. TMZ. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Hey, Freddie Prince and Sarah Michelle Geller having a nice romantic dinner at Bagatelle. Sarah, I read you got you were sued when you were four years old. Is that true? Yes. <laughs> she got sued by McDonald's when she was four because she was in a commercial, and in the commercial it was for Burger King. She called up McDonald's. When I order a regular burger at McDonald's, oh, they yep. make it with twenty percent less meat than Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> she oh. came at it with the fact <laughs> It's like, oh, you better. Okay, that one was in here. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm like, here it is. <laughs> a very, very big message for grown-ups. Do I look 20% smaller to you? I must to McDonald's. When I order a regular burger at McDonald's, they make it with 20% less meat than Burger King. Unbelievable. Luckily, I know a perfect way to show McDonald's how I feel. I go to Burger King. <laughs> <Aren't you proud? laughs> I don't think you could throw that kind of shade in Damn. commercials these days. And McDonald's is like, well, we're about to show you exactly how we feel. And like you're Burger King, just like there was no, there was no other narrative, but just an out and out assault on McDonald's. <laughs> They're like, mm -hmm. we're coming, fucking, we want all the smoke with this commercial. Yep. Fucking firing shots, just do, 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 and a lifetime ban. Yeah, I mean, I might if I had a McDonald's or if I was like a McDonald's CEO, I might. In the eighties, when you could get away with being mean to people, like, yeah, I might, have, I might have stood by that decision. Uh, swearing minion toy. I wonder if there's a video of that. I mean, that's like recent enough to where there have to be, right? Yeah. Um. So then there's this whole tier of all of these recalled things, and. Uh, you know, fucking Hello yeah, Kitty whistle toy and choking well, people. We've got our two minions. Uh, Shrek the glasses. One on the right, when well, McDonald's the says um, billion serve, the they're not just seven. talking about burgers. They're also talking about communities. Uh, McDonald's actually makes a, a really positive impact on, on all sorts of communities. Yeah. And their their crew, uh, their farmers, their franchisees and suppliers, they make a difference. City lines, county lines, even state lines, these things don't create communities. McDonald's creates communities. People create communities. Are you reading something? No. What is that? <laughs> what are you... I'm I, I compiled like a list of some of my thoughts oh, okay. about, about McDonald's and their yeah, positive right. impact. There's, okay, you're there's right. the Ronald Ronald McDonald's house. Mm -hmm. They give out money to to the sick. They do, yeah. but I mean that 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 change thing at the drive thru window looks real dry. Like it looks like uh, real dusty. It looks like a coin has not slid upon that thing for quite some time. I so mean, I don't know how many people are putting their change in there. Do I you don't put know if you know this, but they're, they're creating our future. 
of quality and given a sustainable food. Um, I don't know where they source it, but supposedly it's it's sustainably sourced. It's sustainably sourced, which I, I don't see a citation that I made in my <laughs> notes, but um, yeah. Okay. They, okay. Con- they connect communities, and there's you know there's McDonald's and people. <laughs> they go hand in hand here. What, what what part of this are you not seeing? No, I get it. I do get that. They do okay. connect communities. Okay. Well, there people can franchise a McDonald's. Maybe melt your iceberg with that. All right. Well, with the with the, the warmth from the hearts <laughs> that McDonald's serves in the communities. They do. They do a lot of good, and I'm not trying to downplay any of the good that they do. No, but let's hear these minions. Yeah. One sort of talking about. So let's have a listen to the first one. Banana. <laughs> banana. Well, he doesn't say much, but banana and laughs and and. But it's the second one. And ha- have a listen. I mean, he says a couple of things, but it's the last thing you hear. Anyway, just get to it. Line. It's that what duck, duck, duck. you know it, we just uh, we got, it's, we, it's reaching that's reaching right there. It's that the minions aren't always audible; they just make little noises. Yeah, let's hear it over time. <laughs> nope. I don't know. It sounds like what the fuck to yeah, me. I mean, they were recalled. I know that they were recalled for saying what the fuck. So what the fuck is that? Some sort of Mark Marin minion doll? Yeah, I, w- I mean. Uh, so then there's all kinds of you know gross meat. They got the pink slime in the burger. Uh, Super size me. Sarah Michelle Geller ban. Oh yeah, there's a lawsuit going on right now where uh, this group of uh, this group of women that all worked at this McDonald's somewhere. I forget where. We're all harassed by this manager, like, for years, and then he raped one of them, and they talked to the franchise owner, and he didn't do anything, and they called McDonald's corporate, and McDonald's corporate was like, we just rent the land and the logo, like, we don't have anything to do with that. They don't employ the employees the franchise owner does, so they're, like, legally not... I remember I worked at KFC in Paso, and like the the managers would all just be like pinging underage chicks. It yeah, was like super creepy. Like, and it was like almost like a normal thing. It wasn't. It was like a you know, it wasn't like a big, well kept secret or anything. It was just a different time. It was acceptable in the in the early aughts. Yeah, for I like, know a, that, uh, like a thirty year old to just be like with a seventeen year old. Uh huh. Like nobody would really be stoked on it, but it wasn't like a you know like it is now. Yeah, that happened. Uh Back in like one of the pizza places that I worked at, there was one of the managers that was like in its thirties was yeah, banging like a sixteen year old. Super pedophile, and uh, yeah, that's suspect as fuck. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't age well. And that kind uh, of behavior. yeah, no. But uh, my ex's sister works at KFC, the same one. I think that you worked Paso at. KFC. Yeah, yeah. and uh, well, we shouldn't say that. We shouldn't. Dox oh, these guys, yeah. I mean, you, you would have to do a substantial amount of digging to like. Maybe it'll come be a new documentary. Any, any real names? But uh, but yeah, that, I remember they all like lived in a house together. Yeah, yeah, and 100%. like over by the high school. Yep, that's it. And they you would all know. like have the girls go over you know, there. You know and, what was yeah. going on? Yeah, she went over there and she fucked all of them like one night. It was like a whole thing. Yeah. And she was like, "Yeah, like you know, it's, it was like a thing. Like it was. It was like I said, it wasn't a kept secret, really. Yeah, it was brutal." Uh, maybe I should edit that story out. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I guess a lot of people that live around here listen to this. So yeah, it's true. I mean, there's got to be bleep some. Yeah, if you're stuff. one of those guys and you change your ways, it's fine. We all, you know. Live. I mean, the statute of limitations is long past on that. So yeah, I mean, Chris Hansen's you're not, good. you know, looking at you or anything. I don't think. Um, Suboxone and the Coca Cola. Oh yeah, like I, I mean, I'd like it's to a know drug, about right? That. It's like a. Is that a drug? It's like a um, like one of those drugs you take to like stop doing drugs. Oh, like a methadone. Yeah, thing? yeah, yeah. Like the stuff. Fucking, what's his face was on. I'm not doxing people today, but definitely. <laughs> Matt. No, not. <laughs> just 
different a different firefighter. Oh, uh, <laughs> probably don't need this, <laughs> especially after the 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 TikTok episode. He's probably gonna be looking for. Oh yeah, he's mad. Yeah, I mean, he's mad. But I mean, who wouldn't be? We he, fucking made fun of his TikTok for like a half hour. He, he, his TikTok didn't even have anything on it. Yeah, it wasn't. That so he, he told me that you have to. It was like we suspected we would have had to make a TikTok and add him to see the good ones, to the private ones. Yeah, yeah which I mean. A uh, Utah man claims that a McDonald's worker spiked his Diet Coke with Suboxone. Oh, yeah, it was McDonald's. And he sues McDonald's. How would you prove that? His Coke was spiked with heroin. How was that? How, I mean, that would be real tough to prove. What happened was uh, this guy who, you know, was bettering his life and, you know, trying to be cool. He, uh, you know, had a couple years sober or whatever. His wife went out of town and then her flight got canceled. So she ended up coming back, but he had already done heroin. So he was like, fuck, she's going to know that I'm high. So what I'm going to say is that I went to McDonald's and this oh, kid yeah. at McDonald's put the heroin Blame in my coat. Blame fucking teenager. He was probably, you yeah. know, like a POC. He's like, you know what? Like it was probably like a whole race thing. I'm a. I mean, and just, he, yeah, and he said it just like as an offhanded thing to maybe she'll believe it and she'll, you know, leave me alone and I could sleep it off. And he had to take it all the way to the courtroom. Yeah, to, and he to took it all the way to court life. to keep. He kept snowballing <laughs> and snowballing, and wife kept wanting more and more details. And yeah, want to go down he, there, he really had call to, and talk to he the had manager. to commit all the way. Yeah. So you know that's yeah, probably it's a box and one. Yeah, it's probably what happened. But uh, then there was you know a bunch of shootings that happened. McDonald's yeah, massacre. I mean, shootings, are, they happen everywhere. So uh, Seven-year-old shot in the drive-thru. Yeah, shootings, you're right. I mean, a seven-year-old shot everywhere. And then... Shoot them in school. The meat and potatoes of the deepest depths of this iceberg <clears throat> is Philip Zimbardo with the story of the fast food strip search. No, did we 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 started the episode uh, talking about Philip Zimbardo, right? We pointed out like his devious looks and mm-hmm. his connection. Did we point yeah. out his connection to the Stanford prison thing? Yeah, or yeah, whatever? yeah, we did. So I mean, this guy, he's not not he's a not reputable above guy. above suspicion himself, as far as I'm concerned. Like, I mean, he's put out this little little documentary look at this scam, but nobody's really disproven that he wasn't the culprit or mastermind. Yeah. He is not a reputable person at all. Whatsoever, um, we, no we looked for trust. his personal phone number so we could call him and you know try to have him <coughs> answer for his crimes potentially. Mm-hmm. S- the internet's been scrubbed of it. Yeah, scrubbed. He has scrubbed. no o- for a doctor. Yeah. He has no office. You um, figure that there was probably a large point, like part of his career where he wasn't famous. He has no office at Stanford, which you would think for for you know like a Stanford mm-hmm. Stanford professor, they have like offices, right? Like yeah. I mean, some sort of doctor. Nobody knows what he's a doctor of. Is it? Is it like a like a head shrink? Is it some sort of foot doctor? <laughs> I mean, but anyways, yeah, he breaks it down. You don't know what you would do unless you're in that situation. And a lot of hand gestures. That's not the conclusion of Stanley Milgram or Phil Zimbardo based on our research. That's the conclusion of an assistant manager in McDonald's in Kentucky, Donna Summers, who was trapped in what is the company. He's referred to himself in third person. A stranger calls up, pretending to be a police officer, saying that one of the employees... Uh, um, when you're telling a story, do you gesture with your hands that much? Do you act out like everything that you're saying with your hands? I go, these are the cops, these are the employees. You know, like, I think that might be the tell of a, of a liar. Mm-hmm. Who's or a Suboxone addict. Because, you know, a lot of times Suboxone, it does like the opposite. I mean, he could be responsible for multiple things on this tier. I mean, I'm not, you know, like you have to prove to me that he didn't create the McOnion Nugget or whatever it was. <laughs> he might have, you know, he might have pitched that idea. And Baba, Baba Ganoush. Baba Ganoush, yeah. Yeah. Or the so, lack of it. So uh, so as Philip Zimbardo explains, um, a guy calls a McDonald's. Pretending to be a police officer. Oh, should we reenact how this conversation probably went down? You'd be like the McDonald's employee, and I'll be the I'll be the cop. So, you think you know that much about it already? No, but 
I think that I think that we should end this with calling a McDonald's. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> come to be known as the authority hoax. Okay. A stranger calls up pretending to be a police officer saying that one of the employees uh, um, Why is he whispering? Has stolen something, has contraband. Put some bass in your voice. That, that what she has to do is bring the woman to the... She's a soft... The he's like, oh, in the back, yeah, tell back, me about this. Strip her naked and search yeah, for this contraband. It sounds like it's drugs or something. And then at that point, the guy on the phone, who she believes is a police officer, begins to tell her to do more and more outrageous things. Finally, he asks her to bring in her, um, a male to take care of the situation because she's got to go back to work. And this authority, this authority hoax guy, this guy pretending to be... <laughs> He's a goof. ...tells this man to do something which is horrendous. <gasps> oh. It would be... We could say, this is what's wrong with this guy, what's wrong with this woman, if it didn't happen in over 60 other fast food establishments throughout the country. So here is the power of authority to get good people to do bad things. Not in an experiment, but in everyday life throughout... Oh, oh, so this isn't an experiment, but but his prison trials were... Yeah, he's absolutely or, responsible for this. Did you hear that? Yeah, like I'm saying he's he's 100% the mastermind of this, but let's see, let's okay. see how this plays out. So I thought that this was just one guy goofing with one of McDonald's, but he, this happened at Oh no, this was like a big old thing, yeah. McDonald's? Mm -hmm. And he's definitely responsible for it. And all these people fell for it? Hey, I'm a cop uh, on the phone, here's, here's the sound of my badge. Yeah, I mean, that's my badge. We'll see. We'll we'll call it McDonald's. I mean, we we probably can't say we're cops, but we can be yeah. like we're. I'm an investigator. I'm an investigator. I'm an investigator. Journalist. Hey, I'm an. Hey, I'm an investigator. Um, I'm I'm just wondering yeah. what you're at liberty to tell me about your your. Let's I mean, see. we can't. We really gotta. Let's see. Let's look up the definition of investigator. I mean, can we get a lawyer on the phone for this? <laughs> Can we? Can we get a free call, like a free <laughs> consultation with a lawyer? Oh, that'd be so amazing. Uh, Is there like Fiverr, like lawyers on Fiverr you can get real quick? Immediate. This is just going to like um, take you to like USA Legal Resource. It's like legal they're, chat. They're gonna and like stuff. come and try to pitch you a membership, and like it's like a big old scheme. We could we could call just like a local attorney, um, James McKeon and Lawyers. Who's the um? Who's the attorney for the the um? The the Flores family. Who's uh, representing? <laughs> I mean, I figure if we call them because it's the weekend. Oh yeah, that's true. But maybe on their voicemail, it'll have like, you know, for an emergency, call this number, which I think this kind of is an emergency. This is pertinent. We need to US know. Slow Legal Assistance Foundation. We can try calling them, getting their, their take on it before we dial up McDonald's. Okay, yeah. So. Oh, but w should we see what went down first on the. Oh, yeah. I want, I want to I hear this, right. this gentleman's account of, of his side of okay. the story. And then we'll get some legal advice. Yeah. I'll actually see what I can find while we're watching this, too. A series of strange events recently confirmed Milgram's theories about obedience. Targeting fast food restaurants across the country, a con man telephoned restaurant managers and convinced them to strip search and sometimes sexually abuse their employees. The mystery is not in the con man, but in the victims. Why would they obey? This person was so convincing. People saw him as a legitimate authority. I think we have a um, probably the closest thing that we have to Milgram experiment today in the uh, in these strip searches. The most famous of these incidents took place at a McDonald's in Mount Washington, Kentucky. There was a videotape security camera it had filmed. We didn't hear what the instructions were, but due to do the actions that were uh, had taken place, what the victim was doing in the, in the video and stuff, it was uh, pretty evident what each instruction was. An anonymous caller pretending to be a police officer told the assistant manager that an employee had stolen some money. Are we going to see footage of this? He said, I'm this molestation? I think so. And he said, I'm with the police department. I'm investigating a complaint. It went directly from a theft into a drug thing. And you didn't so find that at all strange that it went from a theft to a drug thing? You know, he would tell me yeah. It wasn't like a red flag? 
shirt, shake it out. Yeah, you're just gonna keep doing it. Oh damn! I know how it's. And the employee to be, but you did it. The man has convinced seventy to a hundred other places. The very same oh, you just blame your your incompetence on on the fact that he's pulled it off on other weak-minded <laughs> yeah fast food mm-hmm. managers. <laughs> he sounded like a police officer, and um, what does a police officer? Yeah, sound like? okay, you know, he sounded like a police. Sounded officer. like fucking MacGyver, or like what? Like he was getting is there one sense voice sense. for cops? Holy shit! Telling people what to do, and then realizing by the phone conversation that they were actually doing what he said. He's telling me that I needed to get someone to sit with her while he goes and gets somebody to come in to pick her up. <laughs> the caller then asked the manager if she was married or had a boyfriend. She said that she had a fiancé. Then the caller asked if she could have her fiancé uh, come to the restaurant and assist uh, her with the, the strip search of the victim. He says, well, why don't you have him come up and sit there? I mean, you can trust him. So I uh, called Wes, my fiancé, we were going to get married, and asked him if he would come up. Uh uh-huh. Wes is it was the Wes manager's is bowdy bowdy. It's the manager's fiance? <laughs> I thought it was the girl's <laughs> fiance. <laughs> no. Oh no. Wes got down there in no time. Look, there was, you know, hardly any difference in that time code. <laughs> he sprinted down there. Fiance to tell her to do. Fuck. Yeah, he's there. Remove her apron and instruct her to do jumping jacks and What? But why did she do this? Like, what? Like, holy shit! The kind of person she was, she was actually. Hopefully, that's not a minor, though. And uh, she was scared of being in trouble with the police, so she sort of just went along and uh, did whatever uh, the fiance told her to do because uh, she didn't want to be in trouble for anything. During all this time, I'm working. I'm running the floor. I'm yeah, so that's that's she's, pretty dark. She's serving up fucking Mick Africa's out here, just like letting this all go down in the back. And she was sitting where she was, and no one said anything. After over two and a half hours, Summer's fiance Walter Nix did something that was unthinkable. Oh no! Complying with the instructions. Oh no! Oh, no. He ordered the employee to perform a sexual act. Oh, what? What? No way that I can. What? What? No way, dude. Why would the cops ask you to do that? I mean, we know that we know the fiance is a pervert. Like we said, he sprinted down there. He got down there in record. I mean, no time. But like, why would the employee like stand for any of this? Yeah. And why would she? The Milgram study showed us that most people. You structure the environment such that no, no, they no, wouldn't. No, 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 no. no. That's, I'd be that's, like, get a cop down here. Wildly in it. Get a cop and down here. That's crazy though. That's, that's, that's fucking, dark. That took a dark turn. That really I wasn't did. Expecting I didn't it expect for, that like, like a full blowjob deal or anything. No, like that. me neither. That's crazy. Why did she do that? Yeah, we can't do anything like that if we call McDonald's. And what a pervert that guy was. He was totally down. Didn't even question it. He was like, you said that. Do you think that they even said that? Maybe he just kind of like added yeah, that. I could, I could totally see I that. I think it could have escalated see, so far to where that wasn't too like, far what, of a what jump. What if he was behind it? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean. You know how when you're like, like say, say you're on like the bow of like a boat and you're coming up on the dock and it's too far away for you to jump. But like eventually you drift like farther and farther and through jumping jacks and like whatever the hell else he made her do. And you get just close enough to where you're like, like I could jump. You know, I could make like, it. I at, could. at no point did she be like, yeah, can you put me on the phone with the cop? Like, I, I really need to hear this cop instruct me to do this. Yeah, this shit should be on speakerphone. I mean, even then. like, And what? I don't want to hear the cop say anything besides sit tight. I'm on my way. <laughs> like, that's it. And other cops like, sir, I'm going to need you to have her suck your, suck your penis now. <laughs> and you just tell her to come over here and put her, your mouth on her and begin performing fellatio. And he just pulls out his already and hard he's dick. Like, hey, he's like, no problem. This cop just said you have to suck me off. <laughs> this cop just said you have to suck me off. That's crazy. I picture it being like like um like the rape scene from Shawshank. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? The, like, like the shower scene, scene yeah. where he's like, yeah. <coughs> well, I don't have the quote from it, but yeah, just just mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, man. I really hope that she wasn't underage, like you said. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, they didn't mention that. I mean, she was. We'll just say that she wasn't. 
Because yeah, otherwise, we're definitely not gonna, doesn't appear. Because we this. can't put this out. Dude. We imagine imagine being out. like that manager chick and like doing this this video. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking like like what what is what wounds are you healing by doing this? It almost seems exploitive. Yeah, it definitely is. And knowing that they're gonna show everything that this girl did, and it's like people that know they said the city. They showed the manager. It's so it's like it's not just some mysterious McDonald's girl. Like if you live in that town, you know who that girl is. You know, so uh, so I'm you, I'm getting them on the horn. Who? M- hey, whoa! Already? Oh, no, we have to call a lawyer. Oh, yeah, dude. that's right. That's right. Stop that's that! Right. Don't do that. I got a number. Okay, I got a lawyer's number. Okay, let's lawyer up first. Yeah, we definitely need that. This call will be recorded for quality assurance. Good. Got nothing to hide. We're also going to be recording. Should we let them know? I think we have to. Yeah. Just say for for quality purposes, this is being recorded. Thank you for calling law offices. Please remain on the line. Law offices? Gracias por llamar a nuestras oficinas legales. Their name is Law Offices? Is, it, is this like a 24-hour type deal? Well, now we got hold music. Um, I mean, we could try to call McDonald's first, but... Thank you for holding Law Offices. This is Vanessa. May I have you meet, please? Hi, this is Michael. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, I'm calling yeah, for some legal advice. Okay, and what type of uh, case were you looking for assistance with? Do you want to tell her? I'm, I'm here as a friend. Well, um, we're looking to, to call a McDonald's and... Um, and Poses. Have, I mean, have you have you heard of the fast food strip search? Uh, the deal where case. the case where the guy like called the McDonald's and had them like search one of the employees. He posed as a police officer oh, and he, he called a McDonald's. Uh, yeah. Employment matter. Um. Well, kind of. We're we're. We're interested in calling a McDonald's ourselves. Obviously, we know, you know, a lot of times past, you can't necessarily say anything criminal to this McDonald's. Um, we're just, we're, we're wondering what we can legally say. We're, we're looking to really walk that line. Yeah. And we're not trying to tip over, tiptoe over, you know, the line of legality. Yeah. So we're hoping we're, that if we were to say that we were investigators, that that would right. not be us implying we that can't, we were police. We can't say we're police, right? Like, but we can say we're investigators without, without any sort of legal recourse. Cause that's like a broad um, thing. I wouldn't be too sure, but I can take down uh, some details that way the attorneys could well we just gave you details i mean that's pretty much that's pretty much all the details yeah you guys uh you record this call for quality assurance correct yeah yeah just play him that it'll be good yeah just play him this yeah and then um just uh i mean i guess have them posted on the website or something Uh, i mean i really wanted to call mcdonald's now like really need this information now but thank you very much vanessa it was Thank you, Vanessa. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. You too. She had a pleasant voice. Uh, I don't know what that was. I feel like Vanessa has a lot of jobs. Like her phone rings and it, and it says like what what role she's supposed to be playing. Oh yeah. And she answers it and she goes, "Thank you for calling Morris Mutual Insurance. How can I help you?" She's just like a like Thank a generic calling- phone person. Thank you for calling Ask a Lawyer. So what was she, what so was she even going to w- do? What we can do is we can call McDonald's and we can ask them some, some questions. Um, yeah, all right. Okay. Ask them if they've, like, okay. Well, ask them if they've heard of this. We have to make sure that we tell them that we're not a cop, you know? Yeah. Like like the rule, same rules as, like, getting the hooker, right? <laughs> yeah. you tell them you're not a cop. You, you put the money on the... Otherwise, there's entrapment. Yeah. I don't know the rules. I don't know the rules. <laughs> So 
loca, güey. Calling McDonald's. Mm. Well, I guess it's past rush. It's yeah, past yeah. Rush. Uh, first thing I need you to know is you're being recorded uh, for quality purposes. My name is uh, Bob Depper Schmidt. I'm a, I'm a, some sort of investigator, investigative journalist, whatever. I mean, that's not really what's important here. We have a few questions. You have a moment to answer our questions. Um, oh, sorry, who is this? Bob Depper Schmidt of Depper Schmidt Investigations. And who are you? Uh, I. Uh, no, no, no! I'm sorry. Uh, uh, it's 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 got to be your your machines. They're so noisy. I'm I'm, I'm Bob Depper Schmidt. I'm um, some sort of investigator. I'm um, predominantly you know like an investigative journalist, like Geraldo. Remember Geraldo Rivera? Uh, he, he at one point at one point uncovered Al Capone's vault. They opened it up live on primetime television. It was a big deal. They didn't find anything in Al Capone's vault. But we're hoping that we can open up uh, the McDonald's vault of secrets and maybe get you to reveal a few of the the um. The, the the things these these dark Did these dark skeletons <laughs> yeah oh man how rude is that I'm a Tascadero McDonald's for you honestly it hasn't ever been there I, I should have called stop doxing McDonald's <laughs> <laughs> and fast food places and local KFC's McDonald's and <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean that was pretty close I mean I feel good about it yeah. So do I. I think it was good. Yeah. I think it was good. It seemed like she had a lot to hide once you started. Yeah, asking but I think like the secrets and the answers. They've they've didn't... they've taken the hint. They know that you know like the jig is up. That's yeah. like a, a saying. Yeah, I like to use. Um, you know, they know that the the tides have turned on their secrecy, and they know that they're being watched. There's watchdog groups like like this podcast and. That, your own that backyard. Guy, your own backyard. I wouldn't be surprised if your own backyard guy comes out with two. a podcast about this before we release this on whatever day. Yeah, we might want to like just rush this out before Chris, whatever his name is. You know, he's he got does like that a, a lot. He puts out a he puts out episodes right before we do, and then we end up having to not put them out because yeah. it's like it's it like everybody's like listening to that podcast. Nobody has time for our podcast, our unrelated podcast. It's. <laughs> It's just kind of, it's coincidental, I'm sure. Yeah. So uh, if you did make it to the end of the podcast, thank you. We yeah, McDonald's you. has a lot of secrets. They also they have some decent cheeseburgers and fries. Yeah. Their fries. Um, I actually want McDonald's now. They, they, do, they have the Ronald McDonald house. They take all of your, your money and give it to sick kids. So. Do you have the app? Do you have the McDonald's app? I, it's going to be sick if I do. It'll be the perfect, the perfect way to end this app. But up, but 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 Oh shit! <laughs> they got good deals. Brow. Let's see. No, I already used my dollar fries. Oh yeah, that's another thing. I, actually, I was gonna rant and rave about about McDonald's. They they ended <laughs> all day breakfast conveniently because of the pandemic. Like, how does how does the pandemic at ever any point like make it to where you can't serve all day breakfast anymore? Also, they raise their prices to where it's like. You go there, you can get like a value meal for like 12 bucks. It's like you didn't raise the quality of your food, McDonald's. Like inflation isn't at the, the rates that you're increasing your prices. Your food is, it's the same as ever. You've slimmed down your menu to like four items. Yeah. You, you, it's, fuck McDonald's, honestly. They, they don't do breakfast all day anymore? No, no, that was a pandemic casualty. Pandemic special. A pandemic casualty, all day breakfast at McDonald's. They're like, oh, you, sorry, guys, we can't serve fucking McGriddles anymore after 11 a.m. Like the dad commercial, they did some like horrible taste to where it was like uh, the McDonald's breakfast has been put on a ventilator until further notice. Yep. And then it passed. So anyways, yeah, fuck McDonald's. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, fuck, fuck them. Grimace, I'd shoot Grimace. <laughs> Whoa. Natural habitat. Golden moldies. Uh, golden moldies, yeah. 